Welcome back. Rwanda has been characterized by poverty and genocide, but it's in the middle of a significant economic turnaround. A new United Nations Human Development Report shows that Rwanda was the fastest growing African nation between 2000 and 2013. Last week, Rwanda's Prime Minister unveiled a three-year plan to help the country continue this transformation. The ambitious effort includes a 30% cut in poverty, greater access to electricity and clean water, and also financial services. Now, for more on Rwanda's way forward, I spoke to Francis Gattare. He's the CEO of the Rwanda Development Board, and I asked him, well, the question he gets asked by most investors, how big is the potential? So the, the most common question was, are you from Rwanda? How is Rwanda now? Because obviously, um, most people remember Rwanda from the news 20 years ago uh, when uh, the tragedy of genocide uh, against the Tutsi people was committed in our country. Those headlines still ring loud in people's heads. And for me, and for many of the people that I came, uh, that came with the president, was to explain what the new Rwanda is like today. And you have quite the success story. I don't think you'll ever forget sort of the, the, the history or the, the awful scenes that we saw on television at that time. Um, but certainly, 20 years later, a lot has changed. And a lot of people cite you as an example uh, of overcoming so many challenges. What do you think was the key ingredient to, to getting Rwanda where it is today? 20 years ago, uh, uh, after the genocide, Rwanda was a failed state. Uh, it, infrastructure governance, the economy, everything had collapsed. And so the leadership uh, has been ready to revamp almost everything, uh, from the economy, uh, from governance, to health, to education, and mobilize the, insp uh, the inspiration for the people to take charge of their destiny. So to invest their time, to invest their talent, and to mobilize partnerships that you are seeing today giving the rewards of where Rwanda is now. So as CEO, uh, essentially in charge of a, a large swath of development and investment for the country, what areas are you looking for partners and money and specifically industries? So the responsibility for the Rwanda Development Board is uh, threefold. One is to identify uh, where the opportunities for growth are, to build the partnerships, both domestic and international, and also uh, to smooth processes and frameworks that would help growth continue to, uh, uh, to grow. And for us, we are seeing um, interest in various sectors, in the services sector, financial services sector, tourism, in mining, in industry. Uh, we're seeing across the board the economy lifting itself uh, up. Uh, over the last 10 years, for example, uh, Rwanda's economy has been growing on the average 8%, 8% on the average. And we're seeing this reflected in people's life. Um, over 10 million people, uh, uh, excuse me, 1 million people were lifted out of poverty just in five years, just in five years, as their incomes are being lifted. It's, it's, um, it's a really an amazing story if you think about it. I mean, remember, of course, the awful pictures and where you are today. Now, that said, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. What is the key challenge that you face still? The key challenge that we still face is mobilizing sufficient private capital uh, to lift the economy uh, to higher levels. Today, we are seeing Rwanda's private investment in the range of 12% of, uh, of our GDP. We would like to see it 30 40% so that we can actually have sufficient growth that would take us beyond uh, the 8% uh, that we're experiencing on the average. A lot of people say uh, that for Africa to grow and to prosper, that they need to tackle the issue of corruption. You guys have tackled it to some extent. Uh, t tell us how you did it and what needs to be done. So as many leaders in Rwanda have said before, really what needs to be done to fight corruption in any country is known. So that has never been a debate. The difference uh, in Rwanda is that there has actually been a serious commitment to implement those good practices that combat corruption in Rwanda. And as a result, you're seeing that there is very, very low perceptions uh, live alone uh, practices of corruption. That was Francis Gattare. He's the CEO of the Rwanda Development Board. Thank